Hello everyone. Today we're talking about the urinary system. The urinary system is part of a bigger system, the excretory system, by which the body will get rid of a lot of its wastes. But today we're concentrating on urine production in the urinary system. All right? So what does the urinary system do? First of all, listen, I always forget, but I want to start by saying that for this video, your homework is simply to take notes. All right? So try to take notes on all the terms I give you. You can reproduce this drawing. I strongly encourage you to do that. Use some color and make it big. Whole page image, okay? Okay, so here we go. Um, the kidneys, which are part of the urinary system, what do they do exactly? They filter blood. That's their job is to filter blood. So the blood coming in, does it have too much water? Does it have too much salt? Does it have certain substances we want to get rid of? We always want the blood to be the same, okay? So how is this done? Well, first of all, let me show you some of, this, of the parts here of the urinary system. You have the aorta, the renal artery, the inferior vena cava, the renal vein, you have the kidneys, you have the ureters, the bladder, and the urethra. So let's go through the path of where fluids go. The blood coming into the kidneys, come down the aorta, this is, it's in red, so you've noticed that this is oxygenated blood. Oxygenated, rich in oxygen, but not filtered yet. So this blood comes in the kidney, the kidney filters this blood, the blood coming out is now CO2 blood that is now filtered. Let me backtrack for a second here. What is this oxygen deoxygenated thing? Well, remember that all our body cells need oxygen to live. So there's actually two things going on here, two very separate things. The cells of the kidney need to live. They need oxygen. Whatever their job is, they need this oxygen. So they will use oxygen, they will produce CO2. Apart from that, you've got the filtration happening, okay? So this is why blood coming in is rich in oxygen because it comes from the aorta. And the oxygen is used by the kidney cells, and this is all explained here, one, two, three, so that's step one. The blood coming back is now CO2 blood, so CO2 rich blood, that now has been filtered. A third thing happens is that the excess liquids and waste, they go towards the bladder and of course through the ureter, the bladder and the urethra and exit the body. Okay? Now urine. What's found in urine? As you can guess, mostly water. Uh, you have some salts. Okay, so if you eat a huge bag of chips and you don't drink, there's going to be a lot of salt coming through your urine. You also get some uh, other substances. For instance, you can have, um, uh, you can have water-soluble vitamins, the B vitamins and the C vitamins. These are vitamins that are not toxic to us because if you take them in large amount, you just pee out the excess, okay, since they, they, um, they are soluble in water. Uh, urea, by the way, it comes from protein metabolism. That means that when you take in some chicken, or you take in some eggs, or you take in some kind of food that has a lot of protein, your body breaks this up into amino acids and urea. Urea is a byproduct, it's something we don't want, we don't need, so we get rid of it. Okay. By the way, urea is an interesting molecule because we use it in the, uh, in the beauty industry where we use it into body lotions. We put in body lotions because it's a molecule that has the capacity to be able to hold a lot of water. So it's very good for body lotions. But it's not the urea that we don't collect urine to get this molecule. We can do it in a lab, okay? So this is the whole system. Pretty simple, huh? Not too bad. I have a question for you now. Two questions, actually. Give me some Give me some situations where you think you would produce a lot of urine. I'll give you one, which is a pretty obvious one. If you drink a lot of fluids, a lot of water, you will produce a lot of urine. Try to give me another situation. Also give me situations where you would produce little or no urine. I'll give you an example. Let's say you're sick and you're vomiting and vomiting. You're losing a lot of water. So your body would not produce a lot of urine. Your body would try to take in and keep in as much of that water as possible, okay? So try to give me a few other uh, situations where you would, you would not produce much urine. Maybe no or not, not much at all. All right? So that's it. I'll see you in class. If you've got questions, bring them to class. See you soon.